Playtime. This is Viva Piñata, a game about building a garden to breed, tame, and learn more about the inhabitants of the distant land of Piñata Island. Needless to say, this is quite possibly the strangest game ever released. You're watching Pixel Quick, and this is Forgotten Treasures. Viva Piñata released on the Xbox 360 on November 9th, 2006 for North America, and shortly after, in the end of November for the rest of the world. It was also released after a kids show under the same name, featuring Dan Green. You know, the guy who voiced Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh! and Knuckles from Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, yeah, that guy. A sequel to the game would be released in 2008, named Trouble in Paradise. Though, with such few changes and only a couple of features added, Trouble in Paradise is more akin to a DLC rather than a whole new game. Both Viva Piñata games would later be re-released on August 4th, 2015 in Rare Replay for the Xbox One, a collection of 30 games from developer Rare's history. Aren't they the guys who made that game about collecting puzzle pieces as a banjo? You mean Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah, and he had the little bird in his bag. Banjo-Kazooie. And there were multiple games. I was close. Ish. There were also two other games released within the series. A DS game called Viva Piñata Pocket Paradise released at the same time as Trouble in Paradise. And a spin-off game called Viva Piñata Party Animals, developed by Chrome Studios. We don't talk about that one. Though, for simplicity, we'll stick to Viva Piñata and its sequel. We'll also be using gameplay specifically from Trouble in Paradise as those two are so similar to begin with. So, the game drops you into a torn up plot of land that you'll need to transform into a functional garden. I mean, this place is a dump. The tools that you show up with include a shovel and a watering can, but the game also provides stores that allow you to do many things such as purchasing items, building piñata specific buildings, and hiring services to take care of certain chores for you, all in exchange for chocolate coins. Chocolate coins? Who needs to buy food when you can eat your money? Meeting certain piñata-specific requirements, the main gameplay element of the title, allows you to attract new piñatas, convince them to live in your garden, and eventually, to breed. Some piñatas are easier to obtain than others. Early on, they might only need a specific piece of fruit or another type of piñata in your garden, while others will only inhabit a garden over a specific monetary value or after consuming other piñatas. Hold on. Piñata cannibalism is not where I saw this going. Piñatas can also get sick, or be whacked with a shovel until they are broken apart and eaten by their fellow residents. What? Yeah. So, once you've filled all of a piñata's romance requirements, you can direct two of the same species toward each other and they will do a short mating dance. I don't know what's weirder, living piñatas doing a mating dance or piñatas mating? After the dance, they'll head off to their home and you'll be presented with a short minigame in which you have to navigate through a field of bombs to get your piñata to their mate. So, uh, hold on, let me get this straight. The living piñatas do some kind of mating dance so they can run an obstacle course filled with actual bombs to make their child. Who came up with this? After the minigame, you'll be rewarded with a short, choreographed couples dance between the two piñata to their preferred music genre. How romantic. Please don't tell me that was piñata conception. Yes. Throughout the game, you will have two friends that hang out in the garden with you. Lefos will act as your guide and moral support throughout your journey. She is cheery and helpful and can give you tips on how to further advance in the game. She seems... normal. What are you not telling me? Cedos, her brother, is... well, kind of obsessed with seeds. He will give you lots of different seeds as you talk to him, though if you feel he's cheaping out on you, you can always give him a good whack with your shovel to get a few more out of his pockets. Should I be worried about you? He might start plotting his revenge and filling your garden with poisonous weeds when you're not looking, but a shovel is useful there too. Please don't smile when you say that. One place where the shovel might not help is with ruffians and their leader, Professor Pesta. They seem somewhat invulnerable to your charged up shovel to the skull attack. They only find solace in one thing, and that is wreaking havoc on your garden and striking fear into your piñata's hearts. Shovel to the- wait, hang on, do piñatas even have hearts? Or souls? Or skulls, for that matter? Assisting the ruffians are the sours. Piñatas that have been corrupted and become inedible, no good for parties. 
They roam freely, harassing your residents and leaving sour candies around to kill your piñatas. Just for fun. Ah, they're corrupted. What about the shovel-throwing, bomb-dodging cannibals from 30 seconds ago? But they're so cute! I don't think you know what that word means. The sour piñatas, however cruel they may seem, are salvageable. Meeting their requirements will cause them to grow a cocoon and transform into a cute, colourful version of themselves. Doing so will give you access to their totem face on the Tower of Sour, effectively uncorrupting all of the sours of that species on the island. That's the one wholesome thing you've said all day. Trouble in Paradise gave us two additional maps to explore, each with their own region-specific piñata varieties, the Piñatic and the Desert Desert. For the piñatas that live here, travelling to their habitats and trapping them in crates is the only way to get them back to your garden. Ah, kidnapping. Why am I not surprised? If the chores are getting too much to handle, you can hire some help. Waterlings and weedlings will help keep your plants healthy and free from weeds, while watchlings can scare away predators and make your garden much more comfortable for prey animals. What prey? Everything so far has been cannibalistic, psychotic or just plain evil. You can also hire some miners to dig for treasures that lay beneath your farm, including gems, coins, and the infamous dragon ash egg. You know what? I'm good. I don't need to know. The hatching of the dragon ash egg marks the highest level of story progression in the game. He can assist by breaking out fights between Piñata and being your one and only defense against Professor Pester. After you hatch the dragon ash, there will still be so many more piñatas for you to discover and romance, but by no means is this the end of the game. You can easily rack up hundreds of hours in your garden without having found everything there is to see. So exactly how well did this mess of a game do? Viva Piñata seemed to do fairly well, with Justin Cook, the designer of Viva Piñata, saying that the game sold about 500,000 copies in the first year. Between some major reviewers, the game receives about an 8 out of 10, with many praising the game's vibrant nature and attention to detail. Sales numbers for Trouble in Paradise aren't well known, but with the game receiving a mostly similar 8 out of 10 across most reviews, it's safe to say that it did reasonably well, with many still calling it an improvement over the original, despite its lack of new content. So that's the story of Viva Piñata, the game that has no end. You're free to continue breeding, collecting and selling your piñata until the end of time. Have you played Viva Piñata? What did you think about it? Should it have been more popular? Let us know down in the comments below, but don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the bell first. Professor Pester is watching. Do you have any ideas for what other games we should cover? Please let us know as well in the comments down below. Thanks for sticking around to the very end of the first Pixel Quick video. We'll see you again very soon.